Hey guys, it's me, Diana, the Sub-Saharan Flaneuse. So one of the questions that I get asked quite often by fellow Africans is how do you get a visa to go to Europe? So a Schengen visa, because that's the visa that allows me to cover tons of, tons of European countries without having to get an extra visa. And for me, it's like amazing. Okay, so I am half Ugandan, half Ghanaian, but I have never lived in either of those countries. I have spent my entire life in the African diaspora. And while that's been cool and super cultural, it's a bitch to get visas. So here's a video about the joys and pains of getting a Schengen visa as an African diasporan. So number one, every time I've needed to get a Schengen visa, I've needed to prove that I have a job or that my parents, when I was still living with them, had enough income to afford taking care of me and to send me to Europe, even though I was paying for the entire trip myself. So I've had four Schengen visas. The first two were when I was on student visas and the last two were when I was on work permits. All of these outside of my home countries. It's a headache to have to prove that your work permit is going to be valid for six months after you plan to return from Europe. That means that if my work permit is expiring in a month, even though I'm still in this job, I can't apply for a Schengen visa, period. Even if I'm able to prove that I have a contract of employment for a whole other year, if I haven't gone to immigration to get my permit renewed, then I can't apply for a Schengen visa. And most of the time, the immigration in the countries where I've lived, they don't necessarily renew your work permit if it hasn't expired yet, because they don't get that. You can't get in and out of the country without it. Oh my God. So there have been times when I've had Schengen visa applications rejected on the grounds that we're not sure that you're going to come back home after your Schengen visa expires. We don't know if you have anything to go back to. Bruh. Wow guys. So Schengen visas require a whole bunch of stuff for anyone who needs to apply to get one. But there's a whole added layer if you don't live in your home country. If you're a student, you have to show that your guardian or your parent has enough money to support you and themselves. It's super intrusive. I've had to send in my mother's bank statements and my mom's salary slips. I've had to send in the bank statements and salary slips of ex-boyfriends and friends just so that they would let me in. Because even though I was working at the time, I wasn't on an official job, I was on little student jobs that did allow me to save but weren't recognized by the Schengen authorities. Two, the Schengen visa process I found is one of the more straightforward visa processes, Western visa processes. What you see is what you get. As long as I've had everything on that list that they ask for, there hasn't been any problem. Like I said earlier, one of the biggest issues was them recognizing where my sources of funds were coming from as a foreigner in a, in a different country. So it was always, oh, you're Ugandan, but you have no family ties in Uganda. What's going on here? I've never really encountered any funny business as long as I've showed every single document on that list. Three, there are currently 26 Schengen states. I've been lucky enough to live in places where there are a good number of Schengen embassies. So some are harder to get a visa from than others. I've gotten some visas from some really tricky Schengen embassies and I've also been able to apply at more lenient embassies and that's just amazing. So many ways to get into the same area which I find brilliant. As a Ugandan passport holder, there's the East African community that I can get into mostly freely. And as a Ghanaian passport holder, there's the ECOWAS, the West African community that I can get into relatively easy as well, which is amazing. But for example, growing up in the SADC region, I couldn't really move around that much because of my passports. That brings me to four. I love the Schengen visa. I love it. One of my life's dreams was to hitchhike across Europe, which I did last year. And I could only do that thanks to the Schengen visa. It allowed me to cross overland 26 different countries. So not all of these countries are right next to each other, obviously. 
So I only got from Poland to France, but for me that was amazing. Living as an African diasporan in Southern Africa when my passports are only really good for East Africa and West Africa, I couldn't really dream about just hopping, country hopping. I always needed to stop at borders and present my passport. So I love the Schengen visa because it is so trippy. It is so wild to cross over from Germany to Switzerland or France to Germany or Estonia to Finland and no one really asking to see your papers. There have been a few people who've asked to see my papers but they honestly didn't really have a right to. I think it was just a little bit of profiling. I didn't really see that happening to any other black non-African passport holders on the bus. We're on a bus in Poland. Why do you need to see my passport? I'm already here, guy. I love this visa. I think it's brilliant. And I look forward to an Africa that is just open, where I can just country hop without having to display my passport, unless it's just to show them that I have an African passport and that's all they need to know. I look forward to that. Five, one big snag about the Schengen visa, also depending on the embassy, is that they hold on to your passport for 21 days. This is something that a lot of embassies, a lot of Western embassies, when they ask you to surrender your passport for three months while we see if your story checks out, guy, that means that as an African diasporan living outside my country, if I have no identity for the three months that you decide are okay for you to keep my passport. What? No. Other than that, I normally plan in advance for my Schengen visa. It's an amazing visa. It's created some amazing adventures. I made friends in seven different countries over my last trip in two months. And that for me is traveling. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel where I plan to keep posting about my adventures traveling on an African passport and where I hope to include videos where I talk with other African travelers who share their amazing and not so amazing experiences. Please subscribe and please share your love with the Sub-Saharan planners and let's get more Africans traveling. Ciao!